British women have had the vote for 30 years. Swiss women still have no vote. Are British women any better off than Swiss women? Then Catherine Elliott. Well, I, I, I hesitate to make any criticism of another country, especially as I don't know Switzerland very well, except as a, as a tourist who goes there and with great pleasure and, and takes part in winter sports and things of that kind. Uh, but I, I, I understand that the Swiss Parliament has in fact passed. Um, a, a, a law about I think there is a referendum, isn't just, there? It's just been done, hasn't it? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So that, in fact, I hope very much they will uh, have, have, a, have, a, have a vote. But I'm an unrepentant defender of votes for women. Uh, I was too young to be a, a suffragette uh, in the great days of his tankers, whom we've just been celebrating. Yes. But I think I would have been one had I, <laughs> <laughs> had I been of that generation. And I, I'm sure that it's only right that uh, in the modern world, men and women who share many responsibilities and very many, um, ex many uh, w uh, much work together and so on, that, that, that they should have a vote. I, I think it would be I most reactionary not to. I thought that perhaps we, we wouldn't on the team. I know I certainly didn't know the exact position of Swiss women. We have been in touch with the Swiss cultural attaché. While you're collecting your thoughts, I might say he says that in Switzerland, in a joint household, the goods are common property. The husband is responsible for the wife de wife's debts in the first place. But if she has a private income, debts are in the second instance recoverable from her. If she works, the money she earns is her own. She is responsible for her own transactions. If she runs a personal car for business, she is responsible for any damage the car may do. No professions are barred to women except Parliament and the Army, but she does not, of course, have to pay exemption tax in lieu of military service. She sounds pretty well off. What do you think, Barbara Wooden? Well, I think perhaps... Uh, I don't know whether we're better off for voting. I think it's quite useful to be able to vote. It's not a very important thing. I had, as a matter of fact, rather an unusual personal experience because I became a magistrate at the age of 29, and that was in the days when women could only vote at 30. And that seemed to me one of the pleasing anomalies of the British Constitution. <laughs> I was considered to be old enough and wise enough to sit in judgment of my fellows, but not old enough to cast a vote. So that clearly casting a vote is very important. But more seriously, it seems to me that anything that makes for recognition that we are equal, but perhaps different in our tastes and attitudes, but nevertheless equal, is a very good thing, such as some of these Swiss laws that have been mentioned about the joint households. And I think it's very irritating in the home if you each have opinions and one can give expression to the opinions through the recognized machinery. It's true, one vote doesn't make much difference, but nevertheless it is something. You can walk in that peculiarly proud way that people always walk into the voting booth. You notice the sort of special way that we walk <laughs> into the booths to vote. And I think that it's very proper that both husband and wife should be able to do that, either to vote the same way or sometimes to vote in different ways. I don't think we're better off in the sense that we're richer, prouder, more independent, but we've got something which is yeah, the birthright yeah, yeah, of yeah, democracy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose it was inevitable. I, I, I don't know that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that <hearty> su <laughs> support. <laughs> I, I don't know that the world's, or this country's any better place since uh, the ladies have got a vote. Mind you, uh, I'm slightly sour about this because uh, I haven't got a vote. So I can't do that proud parade in, uh, oh, in, in sure. the polling booth of talk For a local election, uh, no, I thought, uh, sure. Yes, but... Yes. Local, yes, but uh, on the ground that you'll appear. Uh, yes. yes, on the ground that uh, bankrupt. Or a lunatic, I trust. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly that, but it, it, perhaps I've deceived myself. Uh, no, I, I think uh, it, <coughs> it is a, a only right. They should have the vote. And as a staunch Conservative, I, I believe they're a great asset to the Conservative Party in their votes. And so perhaps for that reason, they have done some good. That's a shocking piece of arrogance to find the Conservative <laughs> Party. <laughs> they Stanford, are an asset sorry. to other parties. <laughs> I'm in favour of votes for women. It always have been and always shall be. And for equal representation in both houses of parliament? Oh, well, certainly, yes. Yeah. We're going to have it now. <laughs> we're, not, we're not going to have it. We're going to have ah, well, yes, we're going to have You better ask the Duke that well, because he is responsible for that. But you mean the hereditary peerages? Yes, we're not well, going that's to his job. We're not going to allow hereditary peerages. We're going to allow some life peers to take the women are, life yeah. peers take their seats, but still you're going to exclude women hereditary peers, are you not? We, we are, and I think if we're going to let the ladies into the House of Lords, which I heartily deplore. Um, <laughs> uh, I think that uh, it's illogical not to allow the life peers in, uh, because wh whereas uh, the life the lady peers, uh, the life lady peers, will no doubt bring great skill and debating ability. I like to think the hereditary peeresses would bring in good looks. <laughs> they bring <laughs> distinction. Has <laughs> anybody anything to add? No, I don't think so.